SmackDown completes their teams for this Sunday Survivor Series, and a Sports Kita exclusive WWE Champion Drew McIntyre talks to our own Rick Cucino, and Undertaker does his first TikTok video. Hello everyone, Jose G here bringing you today's top five stories in today's Sports Kita news update. Bailey, Natalia, and Otis confirmed for Team SmackDown. Bailey and Natalia have been confirmed as the final two members of Team SmackDown. Bailey was named to the team without having to go through a qualifying match. Natalia, on the other hand, qualified after defeating Tamina. Natalia won by putting on Tamina in a sharpshooter as her teammates Bailey and Bianca Belair looked on. She joins Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair, and Bailey, who has proclaimed herself as team captain. Team SmackDown will face off against Team Raw in a team that includes Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Lana, Lacey Evans, and Peyton Royce. Evan and Royce were included on the team last minute after two separate injuries to Mandy Rose and Dana. Brooke. For the men's team, SmackDown, joining Jey Uso, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, and King Corbin is Otis. He was informed by the decision by official Adam Pearce, who personally picked him to complete the men's SmackDown Survivor Series team to face Team Raw this Sunday. Stephanie McMahon sends a message to The Undertaker. WWE's chief brand officer Stephanie McMahon recently took to Twitter and posted a bunch of throwback pictures from her career as a WWE superstar, which featured her escapades with The Undertaker on various occasions. Stephanie McMahon had a heartfelt message for The Undertaker and stated that has been an honor for her to share time with the dead man both in and out of the squared circle over the past three decades. Stephanie McMahon was introduced to the WWE Universe back during the Attitude Era and was immediately put into a storyline that saw Undertaker attempting to marry her in an unholy wedding. Vince McMahon had turned babyface at the time, but was later revealed that he was the higher power and the one behind it all. Years later, Stephanie McMahon became SmackDown general manager and feuded with Vince over his association with Sable. Around that time, The Undertaker was a babyface and aided Stephanie on various occasions in her rivalry against her father. The Undertaker and Stephanie McMahon have shared countless memories in the past, and the WWCBO seems to have nothing but respect and admiration for one of the greatest to ever step foot in the ring. Drew McIntyre says winning the WWE title twice cements his place at the top of the card. In this Sports Kita exclusive, it has been a big week for the new champion, Drew McIntyre, who's about to get even bigger. The Scottish Warrior reclaimed the company's top prize this past Monday on Raw when he defeated Randy Orton. Now he'll take on the Universal Champion, Roman Reigns, in a colossal champion versus champion bout this Sunday at Survivor Series. This match truly features the best of the best what WWE has to offer in 2020. Both men are in their prime producing the best work they've ever done inside a WWE ring. For Roman Reigns, a man who has headlined WrestleMania on numerous occasions, that's saying a lot. For Drew McIntyre, it means quite a lot for the man who was anointed as the chosen one. Winning the WWE Championship for the second time means Drew McIntyre claimed a permanent place in WWE's main event scene. The WWE Champion spoke with our own Rick Uccino to discuss his second title win heading into Survivor Series and the difference between his first title win with no fans at WrestleMania and his second title win inside the Thunderdome. Here's what WWE Champion Drew McIntyre had to say to our very own Rick Uccino in this Sports Kita exclusive. Hey everyone, Rick Uccino here once again on Sports Kita Wrestling's YouTube channel and it is always a pleasure pleasure to get to talk to the champ, especially when he's fresh off winning that belt just five days ago. WWE champion Drew McIntyre joins me now ahead of his match against Roman Reigns this Sunday at Survivor Series. Drew, thank you so much for your time. As always, now two-time WWE champion. How does that sound? Has it has it really hit you yet? Uh, no. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Um, it feels pretty freaking good. Like I asked as soon as I finished the match on Monday, you know how this rain differs from the first one, how I feel, and I said I feel exactly the same. I guess for me, being such a huge fan, such a crazy journey, it feels like the first time every time. But I guess the big thing to take away from it is, you know, we've had a few people that have been fortunate enough to win the title once which is a cool thing to win it once, but then they've not been able to kind of maintain their position or win it a second time and prove themselves at the top of the card. So 
winning it for a second time. You know, it was really cool to kind of cement myself at the top level of WWE. Now, you know, kind of to branch off of what you said, what you said you were asked earlier in this week. You know, under normal circumstances, I, I have to believe it's hard to imagine topping winning your first championship in the main event of WrestleMania, but it's 2020. We don't live anywhere close to normal these days. You beat Brock Lesnar inside an empty, mostly silent performance center. This time around, still no physical fans, but, man, you, you had the atmosphere of the Thunderdome. You had the pyro. You were wielding your boss's sword. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of curious how, how those two moments compare to one another for you. Yeah, I mean, equally, I mean, as much um, as each other, like WrestleMania main event with Brock at the height of the pandemic, the only game in town, every other sport shut down, and I've got that feel-good story can give the world a happy ending. Not how I envisioned it, but uh, it's really grateful to give everyone that happy ending and find out that 14 million people interacted on social media throughout WrestleMania weekend, up 60% from the year prior. But even just hearing those facts and figures, the fact it was Brock, the fact that where we were in the world at that time, you know, meant so much to me. But as you say, this time, you know, I guess a little more more selfishly, um, I did have uh, my biggest rival I've probably had in my life four months myself and Randy Orton was such such a rarity these days uh, we've been through pretty much everything done everything to each other said everything about each other it's inside the Thunderdome we've got the fans there virtually my wife was actually on the screen and nice. watching me as live as you can watch right now uh, which was really cool when she wasn't able to be there obviously in any capacity at Wrestlemania so that meant the world and obviously to cap it all off I'm walking out there with the Scottish badass and my kilt on <laughs> the gigantic Claymore setting off flames <laughs> on the stage and um, yeah defeating Randy Orton finally not just on Raw uh, which was pretty cool first time in five years but with my finish with the Claymore in the middle of the ring one, two, three no shenanigans which I haven't done up to this point with Randy in four months You can watch the full interview with WWE Champion Drew McIntyre on our YouTube channel. Contestant passes away on Wipeout Reboot hosted by John Cena. A male contestant passed away on the Wipeout Reboot show that is hosted by WWE superstar John Cena after completing the obstacle course challenge. This tragic news was brought forward by TMZ who were told by their police sources that they received a cardiac arrest before noon on Wednesday. The on-site medics of the show were already tending to the contestant who has suffered from chest pains after completing the obstacle when the paramedics arrived. The paramedics then took the contestant to a hospital, but sadly he passed away. TMZ also reported that Wipeout followed all the safety protocols such as conducting medical exams for all contestants before they were allowed to participate. John Cena was brought in as a co-host of Wipeout along with comedian Nicole Breyer after it was rebooted by TBS following a successful run on ABC from 2008 to 2014. Cena also serves as the executive producer of the show. TBS issued the following statement to TMZ after the tragic incident saying that we are devastated to have learned of his passing and our deepest sympathy goes out to the family. As of this report, there is no report yet as how this unfortunate incident will affect the future of the show. The Undertaker posts his first TikTok video. 2020 will go down in history as one of the weirdest years ever. If you still don't believe that, The Undertaker just posted his first TikTok video. For a fan who grew up watching wrestling, and for the initial parts believe the kayfabe lies about The Undertaker, the dead man's official TikTok debut is genuinely mind-boggling. In the video posted by The Undertaker, the Phenom's wife, Michelle McCool, attempts to imitate her husband's legendary sit-up. Undertaker joins a growing list of athletes, entertainers, and celebrities who have joined TikTok and connected with a new generation of fans through humor, creativity, and authenticity. His first ever TikTok video kicks off with the Undertaker Challenge and started yesterday with WWE fans joining the hashtag challenge by recreating the dead man's famous sit-up. WWE superstars will also be joining the challenge and sharing their version on TikTok. Thanks for watching today's Sports Kita news update. Follow us on all of our social media. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Download the Sports Kita app from the App Store for the most up-to-date news stories in the world of wrestling.